Hi guys, uh, welcome to Men Don't Cry. Um, before you watch our episode, we wanted to give uh, you, our viewers, an update on the future of the podcast. Over the past 14 months, we've been so proud to bring you our podcast, shining a light on mental health and sharing our lives with you. We're so proud of the episodes we have released and we have been so happy with all of your lovely messages. However, uh, we've always wanted to be a consistent podcast, releasing episodes regularly and having guests that can educate us, as well as you guys, on the importance in advocating mental health. With that in mind, we want to change the structure of Men Don't Cry. We want to give you consistent episodes released bi-weekly. Uh, we also have a long list of exciting guests that can tell their stories and educate us, widening our perspectives on mental health. Uh, we'll also be saying goodbye to our lovely studio uh, and filming in a more intimate and new set. So, with that in mind, please enjoy these final episodes of Series 2 as we look forward to seeing you for our new and improved Men Don't Cry sometime this autumn. See you later. Enjoy. enjoy. Guys. Welcome back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to episode eight of the Men Don't Cry podcast. Whoa. Whoa. We've got eight episodes out. We made it to eight. <laughs> Sensational. Thanks for that. That was yeah. a milestone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, my name is um, Harry. Nice to meet you. You're not the Harry from home that no, has been mentioned that is previously. A different Harry. Yes, I'm not Van Not Geese. the same Harry. He's Harry Laurel. Different hunt show. Different hunt <laughs> show. <laughs> I say, yeah. But, um, and my name's Charlie. Yeah. Oh, I'm Louis. You know us by now. Yeah. yeah. We're boring. We're talking about you. Yeah. Um, so, you, first and foremost, Harry's our mate. I am. Uh, he goes to our university. Yeah. Friends first. Friends first. Same course yeah. as Louis, both on the TV, on the dark side of film. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Don't like it. Film. But um, all in the same realm, mm -hmm. really. And um, <coughs> you'll also have seen Harry on a lot of the shows on Creative Capital. I made that ball in a couple of <laughs> seasoned vet. Oh, seasoned yeah. veteran season of the camera. Okay, yeah. Uh, what have I done? Um, uh, Out and About, brilliant show. Yeah, Peggy's really Pigeons. Show. Um, mm. Very recently featured on The Rough Cut. Um, had a lovely time on there as well. Yeah, it's a great show. Um, and the fresh, fresh out. Uh, Harry has no friends. Yeah. Not a statement. If you want to watch that, head over to Creative Capital's channel. Yeah. After um, this episode. After this episode. After the episode. <laughs> after the episode. Not now. Come back. Come back later. Um, but that one's new and a good laugh as well. So give a watch to that as well. And yeah. now, um, the Men Don't Cry podcast. Wee. So happy to have you. We mate. made it. Thanks. First ever guest. It is yeah. an absolute first pleasure. First ever guest. And as we said, like we wanted the first guest to be someone that yeah. we know and that we're mates with. And we didn't just want to get someone on that we'd be interviewing. Yeah. We just want to have a chat, have a chat about you, let the people know you're an interesting guy. Oh, you know, you've got a few stories up your sleeve. Say it again, say uh, it. <laughs> I think I think the first thing we start off with is something that a lot of people might have seen you on um, is the one and only dinner date. Oh, um, that now I know, I know, that. Rough Cut have covered it. I know we've covered it on the. Uh, we did a little did a segment but, on the live stream, but we yeah. want to have a little bit more of a chat about. What that was actually instead of just ripping the piss out of yeah. you. Yeah, at the time enough, of recording, we're coming up to the one year anniversary. Very close to the release. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. as well. It would, have, it would have been. It, it would have been Christmas Eve release. Yeah, so yeah. that's already been Christmas now. special. You could. say. It was a Christmas special. Yeah. I I was on the screens of families all across the UK. I mean, my we, family for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and, and we and we all sat down when when the episode of Dinner Dates was on. That Harry was on. I said to my family. We have to sit down. Yeah. This is my mate's going to be on dinner dates, yeah. and I never actually really watched dinner dates before properly. Yeah. We all sat down. It was absolutely lovely. Brilliant. Arancini, by the way. Oh, you know what? Oh my God, I wish. Yeah. I wish. Well, I want. I, I am genuine, and I'm not just asking for the podcast. I'm genuinely curious mm. about how it came about. Like, because I know you've always been into presenting, but how did it come about, and how did you sort of apply for it? Yeah, it was actually really weird. Um, so when I was just started. <laughs> That's staying in. That's staying in. Oh. We're, having some, we're having some set malfunctions, yeah. but it's fine. We're going to carry on with we're your. Gonna uh, carry on. We're going to carry on with your dinner story. Ruin my story. <laughs> 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 no, it was um, it was really strange because when I so when I started at the uni, um, obviously I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do some presenting stuff, and um, the second we got in here and we decided we needed talent, found out we needed talent, we go to these really kind of like basic um, free websites where you can apply to do stuff. Um, and the first thing I went is, oh, brilliant, I'll put myself on there. Did, and I, I remember it so well, I was out with my mates, uh, we were in Swanage, of all places. Mm. I was deathly sick, I was really ill. Yeah. Um, and I was walking down the beach and I got a text from my phone on this app. Uh, it said ITV, blah, 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 dinner dates. And I was like, hmm, sounds interesting. <laughs> uh, sounds quite good. Uh, it looked at it, I thought it was a joke at first. Um, and it was just like, we think you might be a good fit, send some photos, send it my way. Uh, send them all over and then about a week or so later when I got back, they. Uh, 
they messaged me and went, yeah, we're going to take you through to the next stage. And it was a couple months, basically, of um, uh, different stages of it, um, talking, doing little interviews, um, what you would cook, how you are. And what do you think they're looking for? What do you think ITV are looking for honest, dinner dates? Sort of honest special? to God, they ask you your type, what kind of character you are, yeah. what you do on a first date, how far you take it, yeah. um, all this stuff. I actually think in my second interview, I sang. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, uh, no, I think I danced. It was one that sung or danced because they asked me something about what I do, and I was like, oh, I've bust some moves. I'm really good yeah. at dancing. And they're like, oh, really? Show us your moves. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm under the costume. And I was in my dancing. room, little, little camera. I got up, started. With no fucking, music? No, no music. Cut it oh, shape. Dead time. But if they could ever release that, I would. <laughs> I would you know pay what? So much money. You've got to you've got to go you've got to do the whole way. You've got to put yourself out. That's how you end up on the they want yeah. someone that's, dinner dates. Yeah. Precisely. <laughs> I imagine they want someone that's just comfortable on camera. Yeah. yeah, and that's what they look for. You know, they want to make sure that you're not going to panic and choke. But yeah. I mean, to be honest with the process, it's a lot of stop start. It's not as mm. like one one take or smooth. Uh, at what at what point in the so you obviously you applied for it as a bit of like a fuck it that sort of thing. At what point did it start to become a thing of? Oh no! The, I'm probably actually going to go on this show. Like, what what stage was that? And when did you look to find love on dinner dates? <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant question. <laughs> um, so it was about after the second interview, and they said, uh, "Okay, we'll we'll get back to you. We're going to put you into the basic list." And it's also they say a mix of if we think you're a good fit, and also if we think we'll find people that are a good fit for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's a bit mix of both. And I remember it. I think it was, I got a call while I was working and it was the, I put the number as ITV producer to make myself mm. sound big. It was just some random girl sitting in an office basically. <laughs> um, and she called me up and she went, so we're going to give you an, a, a, an episode. And I was like, fuck <laughs> I was I was so excited. Um, and then about a month later, um, I was, and this is the most private school thing you can imagine, but I was genuinely playing golf with my dad. I was, on the, I was on the 18th. I was on the 18th green, and I had an absolute stinking game. <laughs> and I get my phone out, and it's we found a date. Mm. And I was like fucking screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad's like, "Be quiet, you're on a golf course." I was actually, I was so gassed with myself. <laughs> you like proper buzzing. Yeah, I was buzzing. In your like, yeah, mate, literally in, in my shorts, <laughs> high white socks, putter in hand, flicking my got my golf glove like yeah, this. Yeah. Um, no, I was absolutely chuffed. Um, and it wasn't really then in. It wasn't until then where it really set in. I was like, I'm going to be on the yeah. show. Like they're actually now finding dates to shoot at my house, yeah. asking me when I'm free, mm. like all this stuff, getting me through COVID tests. So how does how does it work in terms of because obviously your episode there was a girl and then she went on three dates and yeah. one of the dates was you. Does it is it is it always a girl picking the blokes or is it also sometimes the blokes picking the women? Is yeah, it, I mean way? actually you remind me of that because I completely forgot. Um, so. It's not always, first of all, it's not always girls picking guys, it can be guys picking girls. No, just, so I, uh, I thought there might be a chance that I was, I, when I went into it, I was hoping that I would be picking the girls. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always the case, it's also down to what they have for the plan. So they're gonna plan so, so many boys, so many girls. Also, yeah. you know you had menu. Yeah. Could it get to the point where they're going, you've got an episode and then she doesn't pick your menu? Yes. So Wow, that's good. So that's what I forgot. So there's five people, obviously only three get picked. So oh, cool. there's a very slim chance, or not slim chance, it's a very decent chance that you could be in the first 30 seconds of the show where they show the five boys, where they did a little taste tape, mm -hmm. and, that's and you're one of the two that's not picked. That's it, yeah. you're done. Yeah. And you don't get and a second they use, though. And they would they have made you cook? No, no, no they, they don't make you cook. Like so there was, yeah, yeah, there were two days. There was a day where they come do like the B-roll and all like yeah. the, early, the early stuff. So there's actually a shot in there of me playing golf at a... Uh, uh, at Top Golf, you basically. Love golf, I do, mate. I, was oh, like, I love Top Golf. I've been going Top Golf recently. It's, it's fucking good, sick, isn't it? But I was there. I was swinging. I was just hitting balls, and they did some B-roll there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they did, literally just did some recording there. That was one day, and then they made me write the menu. All the like shitty jokes and, and stuff. And what was your menu again? So my menu was what was, what was the what was the thought process behind it? So it was I'm Italian. Can mm -hmm. make some interesting Italian home cooked food. Mm -hmm. So might as well go with that. Also, I can't cook. Um, <laughs> that's a given. You can find out in the episode, I can't cook. Yeah, and I spent and chicken, please. <laughs> <laughs> I spent three weeks with my mum every day. Or at most days, cooking one of the three meals. So what, I really? Well, that's proper, I, was, I was grinding. Grind. I was grinding, putting in the work. <laughs> I, was, I actually was working so hard. But that's yeah. brilliant that you actually, like, you was like, yeah, right, no, trying. I'm on here. So I don't want to fuck no, it No, exactly. Up, so I did arancini. It, it was arancini to start. Which, by the way, is no joke. What is arancini? Yeah. Arancini is like, like deep fried is. rice balls, yeah. and you have a different. Did you fuck that up? No, mine was sensational. Yeah, it's oh, okay. so, so it was um, basically deep fried rice balls with mozzarella melted in the middle. Ooh, right, ugh. it was That's sensational. Nice. Any sauce on that? 
Uh, yeah, it was garnished with a bit of tomato sauce. Ooh, so you could kind of have that as a little. And you know, I did that little crate thing where I took the back of the spoon and went slosh. Yeah. Oh, a little, little slice. Little white, yeah. That's a classic, oh, mate. Yeah. That's oh, a classic. Felt, oh, Elevates the dish. Yeah, mate, yeah. different level. Um, <laughs> and then the main was pizza. Now, this went wrong because in the, in the practices I did in the weeks before, I was acing it. It's pizza, it's not too hard. But you make it yeah. from scratch, you've got to make yeah. sure the dough's right. Um, I won't reveal the whole bits of the episode because there's some very funny bits where I may or may not have needed some assistance. But long story short, she was waiting for about an hour for this pizza because <laughs> we had to make it and cook it. But in terms of filming that, are you like are you allowed to go in and go? Oh, sorry, and I like, have a bit of a joke, or does it all have to be you stay in the kitchen? They're filming you. Like it's all very so because there's a bit of secrecy because there's the whole how do you think the date's going? How do you think the date's going? And it's really funny because my ha- my f- uh, house at the time wasn't very big, so I could hear what she was saying about me. Brilliant. Basically. This is some serious behind the so scenes I, stuff. So yeah, here, right? but um, so like they'll hi. they'll do like the cooking of the pizza and go, okay, now we'll do your little like secret bit where you'll go and talk and then we'll go do her bit, mm-hmm. just to fill the time. Mm-hmm. So they do try and do that well, but to be fair, it got to about an hour because it was make, because the whole bit was she helped make the pizza. And then I forgot to preheat the oven, so it was <laughs> cold. And they went, Harry, this poor girl is waiting. What, the... the, the yeah, they were so like, they were like it's got to come out. How many people were there? Two. From the team? It was two people. Camera op. It was a producer, uh, a producer slash researcher and a director slash camera op. That so was just, it. just single and it was camera. single camera. Yeah. Um, and they were literally like, Harry, she's waiting. You've got to get the pizza out of the oven. <laughs> And I'm like, it looks all right, doesn't it? They're like, yeah. And on this instance, I'd used a little bit more dough than I had on previous ones. Yeah. So it was a chunky boy. And the thing came out soggy as oh. fuck. Because it didn't have enough time to and properly And you've been practicing as well. I've been practicing. I, and my piece have been so Blessing. good. But like, it just came out with when a the bit. Like, it's when you pick it. And you've, you know when you've got a good cooked pizza and it's like that. And my pizza was mm, floppy. Mm, a little yeah, bit you floppy. Want, you want a crust on the bottom, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't ideal. And she thought it was a bit soggy as well. So we didn't finish the pizza. But the arancini was good. And then I finished with panna cotta, which was mm. nice and simple. That one was good. Yeah. Um, Cushion for and she drank a lot. She drank a lot. Did she actually? She bought a bottle of champagne. Uh, and by the time I came back from making the starters, it was like half gone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And but then, was she just sat there yeah, at mate, the table? Mate, that must be so talking, awkward. She must have just been drinking. Talking like, to the researcher right. while the, the, um, like the director was recording me fucking doing like yeah. glasses of shampoos. And I was like, and I got back and I was like, fuck. And the research was like, she's had a decent amount to drink. <laughs> and then she was like, should we have some drinks? <laughs> and then I started playing like gin and tonics, which were, were no shop measures existed. Yeah. Nothing, it was yeah, just, just gin. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. a little bit of tonic. And we had about three of those each. So she was pretty steaming by yeah. the end yeah. of it, to be honest with you. Um, she was a lovely girl. I. I feel like I'm rambling on a bit here, so I'm going to No, 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 carry on. But um, she, she wasn't really my cup of tea. Mm. But the first time you get on a camera and it's in a romantic, you have, and I was saying to myself, if I don't like her, I'm going to say she's not attractive. Mm. You do not have the balls to go yeah. on, on TV. You know, this is going out on ITV. Yeah, she's clapped. You can't. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> like, I, you just can't. I really. No, we, when, done we've been in that position when we did our dinner dates episodes. Yeah. Obviously, we were like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. couldn't say that to her face. You did, but I couldn't. <laughs> also, actually, really funny. I won't say his name, but someone else from this university applied to go on dinner dates. Really? Yeah. Didn't get it. Uh, did not just not that, cut from. I the don't. Same. So I want to find out later. Yeah. Not cut from the same cloth, really. Yeah, I'll tell but, you later. Um, that was really funny. But um, yeah, it was just a really really wild one because I und- I didn't expect her to have that much to drink. Also, she wasn't the girl I was meant to meet. The date two days before, and this is in the middle of like COVID still being yeah. lifted. Yeah, so when was this filmed? Uh, it was the summer of that year. Oh. So it was about like summer 2020. 2020. Yeah. So just no, no 2021. 2021, 2021 yeah. And it exited that Christmas. December, yeah. Christmas yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, it was really funny. Not funny actually, I was gutted. But uh, I, was at, I was just out, I was at the gym, and I got a call from the producer saying, so the girl you're meant to go out with, she's got COVID. Um, I was like, oh, really, yeah. And they're like, it's okay, we've got someone else. Did she go on to do another episode? I don't know, they wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't oh, tell shit. me anything about yeah. the girl. They're okay. like, you can't know anything. Um, and you know, they were, they, it was a really secretive thing. Like, I wasn't obviously allowed to know anything about her. Either. I didn't know her age, what she looked like, her name. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I found out her name, and her name was Stevie. And I was like, geezer? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. Makes enough of it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I knew nothing about her. It wasn't meant to be the, uh, her, but it ended up being her in the end. Mm. Um, so I was actually really curious to know what the real, what the mm. other girl was going to be like, yeah, and they yeah. wouldn't tell me anything. Mm. Uh, Did the she only find other, out? 
No, no, they still don't want to tell me anything. But the only other thing was like she was like four years, five years older than me. Yeah. Um, which is a bit weird. I remember you made a guess and she went, and you, she went, oh. Yeah. And she, she went, found out. It was the whole, oh, I didn't know that. What? <laughs> oh. Instantly, <laughs> date's gone. Yeah. Date's gone. Well, TikTok, can you, because this is going to be a clip 100%, can you help us find the mystery lady? Find the mystery lady. Um, so it, it would have, she, you would have been, you would know, yeah. so you would have been filming in what month? Like April, May. You would have filmed about April, May, dinner date. You got COVID two days before, three days before the episode was filmed. And that episode got released in December. If you, if you know exactly who you are, who this person is, let me know. Because <laughs> we will make just our own dinner dates and I will just go out with this we'll girl. We'll make a creative capital TikTok, we will find, we'll yeah. find this woman. We'll, yeah, we'll just do a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll just record a one-on-one -on -one date with me and this girl. Go on a date uh, with Harry. Dinner dates Go on a date with Harry. Yeah. Go on a date with and Harry. Also, and no go on a date with no Harry. That'd be a good series, you know? <laughs> just Harry dates. Random women. You're yeah. dinner dates, right? Harry's Riz. No matter what <laughs> this woman looks like or is like, in your head, she is the one that got away. So she's just yeah. be perfect no matter what. I genuinely think that I would have gotten really well with this girl. And you don't know nothing about her. Nothing about her, mate. Actually, nothing. But and that's not to say the other girl. Um, she can't, she was. A, she seemed like a nice girl. Did she get in touch with you when the episode aired? Oh, trying to get dirty laundry. Right? <laughs> uh, she did contact me the day it aired <laughs> uh, and said we should go out for drinks sometime. Yeah. What did you say? And <laughs> I will do the spoiler, which is. I didn't get picked by oh, the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Frowny it's face. Fine. It's been out for a while. But <laughs> it, and she obviously knew this because it had been recorded. Um, and the day it came out, knowing that I didn't get, she didn't pick me, messaged me saying we should go out for drinks. And I went, oh, yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Uh, never, yeah, never responded to her again because. Oh, just felt she didn't pick you. Yeah, didn't pick, it's really disrespected, hurt. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be like, Not you don't want her show. to say no on the TV show mm. and then go out and refer It's just awkward at that point. It was, and I think... No, I've done it. I said, explain yourself. Yeah. Explain yourself what you're embarrassed about. <laughs> and not no, you know what? I want answers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've been ruined. Miss My reputation. But also, I was, I was really wondering. Even if your real name. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, like, when the episode came out. Because obviously, our point of view is that like, I was buzzing because my family, like, who's this again? I was like, shut up, it's this guy at uni. Like, he's, he's on the football team. He's my oh, hero. Oh, <laughs> like, like, he's brilliant. And we, you had so many people like yeah. behind you. Like driving, yeah, group chat driving was traffic. Was yeah, the group chat was going, going off. The group chat was going off. How was that like when you? Because obviously we've talked about how you feel, found it filming the episode. And mm. You're naturally quite good on screen anyway. Like you, you know, you're quite comfortable. How did you find? Was it overwhelming when you saw the amount of people like posting on their stories and like? Also, like, did you ever look up viewing figures or anything? To like be that? honest, like, I'm a little narcissist. Like when I was seeing people like post me. On their stories, it was like fueling me. It's like, yeah. yes, I'm famous. <laughs> this is my, this so is how my career be begins. Rush, though, it's got to be a rush. Yeah, I mean, t t it was, it was the mix of people like messaging, saying, "Oh, Harry, this is this," and you're watching yourself on the telly, like it's live. You mm. know, this is going out, and you could just imagine there's other families so sitting watching people around the country would have been watching. And on Christmas Eve, and it was, it was like, and obviously it wasn't this, but I was at the barbers the other day, and I sat down in the chair, and the guy, like, the guy goes, "You look familiar." And I don't want to be that guy to go, you, you must have seen me on dinner dates, yeah. mate. Yeah, but, but part of you just goes, is Maybe. there a chance that he's yeah. seen me there? I mean, yeah, it's a very good chance that yeah. he goes out near where I live, yeah. I work at the pub, and he's seen me there. Yeah. Or just seen me you on the go, street. No, you're thinking of Dylan O'Brien. Yeah. That's, sorry, you got me confused. <laughs> yeah, no, I have it all the time. Crumbs, mate. It does <laughs> happen. Like From it. time to time, I do get the Dylan <laughs> Never happened. Never happened. That's like Maisie called me Theo James. That's actually hateful. That is hateful. But, um... <laughs> no, yeah, it was it. I, I love it, and it was it was great in the moment yeah. as well. Especially like all the boys. I, I still remember when we were at football training, and um, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't know it was definitely happening yet. And I was just like, uh, if you know me, you you guys know that I can't like keep a secret. If I if, if I think <laughs> something's gonna happen, yeah. I just say it. And I was like, I was sitting there, and I can't remember who I was talking to. I just went, yeah, oh, I'm busy that day. I'm uh, I'm on. <laughs> And dinner dates. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, and and they, went, they went, what? And I was no, like, and they went, what the fuck is dinner, dinner dates? Date? And they went, yeah. oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, no, it's, just right. on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> it's just on ITV B, you know, I'm just a talent <laughs> for like a live show. <laughs> I, remember you, I remember when you found out it was a Christmas Eve episode and you went, Louis, I don't know who else to call, but yeah. I need to tell someone. Oh, yeah, yeah. How Christmas, 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 so, yeah, Christmas so, so when, did, when did you find out it was going to be on Christmas Eve? Mate, it must have been like the beginning of December. Yeah, it was, so it I had was about, quite, I was at home by this point. I had about, 20 days notice, let's say. <sighs> to promote the fuck yeah. out of it. <laughs> and they went, and it was in red text, and I was, and every day, and I'm not, every day, I would check my emails and go, no, no. no. And this was for months, by the yeah, way, yeah. because it was, it was between filming and, it, and me being told, it was months. And um, I was on my way to 
uh, work, I'm on the bus, I see the email, red text, 24th of December. <sighs> and I call Mate. my mum. I go, hey mum, I'm just on my way to work, just let you know, I'm going to be on TV on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and she goes, oh, oh. Oh my God. That dad. is meant yeah. to be so much bigger that it's yeah, on Christmas Eve. Sorry, mate. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, Christmas busy Eve. Watching myself on TV. <laughs> Ding dong. See you later. But, <laughs> yeah. but then I called my dad and my dad was like, oh, nice. Nice, oh. nice someone to ground you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get too And then I called Louis because I was like, I'm fucking freaking out. <laughs> I'm freaking out, man. Yeah, um, but that was, that was incredible when I found it. I mean, yeah. it's still, you know, when it happened, I felt like, to be honest, and this is a bit, this is very big headed of me, but I did genuinely feel like, oh, this is it, I'm going to take off. Yeah. And yeah. then you realise that it's not that. It's like, it's great. Did you see like and a then you hit the dizzy like heights of Peckish Pigeons season one. Exactly, <laughs> and then you just can't yeah. go from there. But yeah. did you, did you like, when the episode aired or anything like that, did you have like an, in, did you have a few more people follow you or right. check you out? Or it what, was very, what, it, what was it like? very, like, very faint. I wouldn't Cause, say cause that. Because how, because I guess, like, they're not like they're plugging your socials yeah. on the show. There's no way to find you. I mean, yeah. I did try. Two and, one. two and one go. Did you see that, guys? So, like, from from the actual show, like airing, I guess I don't really plug your social medias, but you, mm. did you see any? Like, did, did a couple more people follow you, or what was that like? To be honest, not really. Like, there were a couple. Like, yeah. and the thing is, when um, the show came out, the same email that I got sent the this is the date. Yeah. They send you a whole package on how to deal with harassment online, people bullying you, oh, making jokes about good, you. It's really good. It was really yeah. good from them on their behalf. But also, for me, that built me up to be like, yeah. oh my god. People something are gonna, gonna blow up. Something's gonna happen. And I thought this is gonna be like big. Mm. Um, and I got really excited about that. And then it came around and I got like five extra followers or something, because it's not promoted anywhere. It's, yeah. it's you know, it was on ITV. And they probably the followers Island. probably would have been from all your mates posting yeah. you on their yeah. story. However, I did try to see if I, anyone was tweeting about me as it happened. <laughs> and I do think there were one or two tweets. Like, <laughs> really? I can't I'd have to try That's and see brilliant. if I can find That's it. Great. But again, in the height of me thinking I'm gonna go viral. Um, which also is why I said I've got Bunda on the show. That was planted. I was like, I was like, I, have I, I was yeah. like, I was like, all right, Harry, think of the clip, execute the clip. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, it was a good moment. It was a great moment. And thinking of that going viral, I was thinking I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like trending on Twitter. Yeah. Of course, I'm gonna be trending on Twitter. It was fucking ITVB. <laughs> like, Bunda starts yeah, trending on Twitter. Bunda. <laughs> yeah, ITVB B Bunda. Like, <laughs> but um, no, it wasn't like it was. It was nice. It was fun. It, but it wasn't like I got this massive boom of followers. Mm. Yeah. It was just, it happened. So people saw it and people, you will every so often, every so often, once in a blue moon, see someone who goes, I remember you from here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I guess that moves us on nicely to like, obviously when, especially in that first year and that second year as well, like I, I feel as though I, and obviously I'm not on your course, but from Creative Capital and that sort of thing, I knew you as the on-screen talent, as the presenter, yeah. right? And like, so how, how did that come about? And like, because obviously dinner dates is a good way and shows like dinner dates are a good way to get exposure and to build a portfolio of shows you've been on. What, what so uh, uh, my first question is sort of how did you come to the conclusion that that was something you wanted to get into? It was, it was a weird kind of like road because when I started before applying to Ravensbourne, I was going to do law. And that was then became classics. Uh, very different to what you Very different. And even my, my A-levels, I mean, nothing to do with what I, what I with TV, nothing creative. Mm. Um, it was in, not until I had the conversation a couple of months before A-levels with my dad where I went, I don't want to be a lawyer. I actually will hate it. My sister did a foundation degree here. She recommended it, went in, had the meeting, thought, oh, this is amazing. Um, and at that point where I just started making content, I didn't even know necessarily that I wanted to be a presenter, but I knew I enjoyed being in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started, you know, I saw the opportunities, I knew I liked doing it, and it was in the, like, the first term where I sat down and I was like, oh, is anyone, they were like, we need someone to just talk in camera. And I was like, I'll do it. I'm happy doing it. I'm happy being in front of the camera. And I sat down and the, the teacher, like, he gassed me up. He made me feel great about myself. And I was like, this is set, this is set. People, if people can see what I'm seeing, which is I think I'm good in front of the camera, um, and they were saying to me, oh, you're not bad in front of cameras. Then I was like, okay, this is a good place to start. This is where I should go. Yeah. Um, and from there, I just started going, if they need a job, I'll do it. If you need a presenter, I'll do it. Just trying to like build that. And like you said, it was, I wasn't even thinking about it at the time as being portfolio building. I was thinking of being as career changing going on dinner days. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is a great set for me. But now I just see it as, it's really high Another quality thing. footage for my for my show reel. You know, mm. it's it's great. I use it all the time. It's like, the, like there's like four clips of it in my in my show reel. It makes up most of it. But um, it started there. I didn't necessarily know when I got here, but um, it's slowly like as well. Dinner dates, dinner dates helped, but it's not presenting. That's yeah, just yeah. talent. Mm -hmm. That's more like nearly that's borderline acting. Mm -hmm. um, and I realised as well that using those opportunities because they did send more my way. But I was also like, 
it's not building presenting practice, it's building cam being comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah. And I, I felt like I already was, so yeah. I kind of stopped taking them <clears throat> as well. Well, I, I always feel like, because I've done, obviously we do the, this show, and mm. I did a little video called Carp Fest, which is like a live coverage sort of thing. It's more of a live stream, that sort of thing. And so I've done a li little bit here and there. I went on rough, uh, you know, went on rough cut, and that episode was really fun. Um, and I can definitely tell that the difference now between presenting and being talent, mm. and, and realizing that there's a difference for people out there that don't understand. Like, presenting is where you're basically the host of the show. You're the Ant and Deck. You're the Stephen Mulhern. You're the whatever, right? And you're almost the host of the show and you glue everything together it's a really important role but you do have to put on a persona and I felt as though when I did like a uh, cart fest I was struggling between just being myself and you know I've got quite a dry sense of humor I like to complain and moan a lot and try and be funny but then also making sure that I'm like almost professional yeah. and have to like have a sort of character to put on whereas I much prefer if I'm being honest just being able to be myself and let my personality come through yeah. so like obviously you've been uh, 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 like let's say right now your talent you're not like presenting with mm. us what do you prefer do you do you see them differences and, and feel as though you prefer presenting or, or yeah I mean it still feels a lot as well like presenting your you some you know you're following a narrative or you're taking a direction somewhere but a lot of the time I feel like with most of the content I've done it's kind of like you know I start with this really goofy voice the same way we started mm. the show is the hi guys like you know hi guys. and that that only started because one of the early shows I did I got in front of the camera and I went how do I start? What do I say? Mm. Um, and I just basically panicked and it just squeaked mm. out of me. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, this is kind of funny. This is weird. Yeah. But that sets a persona. That doesn't set you yeah. as, as who you are. And it, I had this really interesting conversation with my cousin who is an aspiring actor. And he said, I find it crazy because I want to be in the front of the camera, but all I want to be is someone but myself. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. you want to be is yourself. yourself yeah. Like it's a similar path, but it's complete polar opposites. Yeah. Um, and I think I enjoy this is the narcissist in me coming out. I enjoy being in that limelight, doing yeah. the, being the, the yeah. talent part of things. But I, originally it started because you wanted to present and then lead people into that kind of narrative and start yeah. asking questions, you know, proposing it to other people and getting them involved instead of just being about you. Because that yeah. also becomes a lot of weight on the show is when it's just you and you're doing everything. Um, so I think it is more of like that presenting, not talent. But that whole narcissistic thing, like I would say, there's no way that we, I mean, when we look back at our first episode, we started editing, we were like, oh my God, like we look awful, we sound awful, like all that sort of stuff. But although you like, might not love yourself and be in love with yourself, you've got to have that bit of narcissism in you where you go, oh, but I'm yeah, right, but that, yeah. Was, that was pretty good. And mm. you, because you, to put yourself out there, you need to have a certain amount of confidence. Now it's finding the balance, yeah. right? So you don't end up being a knobhead yeah. and letting anything go to your head. And that's what you, obviously you've been talking about with the whole dinner, when dinner dates came out and when you get on shows and that sort of thing. Like even with like, for example, like take you a little bit behind the scenes, right? When Run Reception came out, I didn't even realize it had come out mm. because you and Tyler, the other presenter, both just put it on your stories and that was that. There was no pushing it. Like I like to push mm. this and bring out as many people as yeah, possible. Yeah, you lost sick of us by this point. But yeah, probably. Um, but, oh, yeah. but you just sort of put it out there and was just like, cool. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that's an interesting way to go about things. It's almost as if like, if you guys want to watch let it, it be, there you go, yeah. like, let it be, that sort of thing. And, that, and that's the approach you take, yeah. um, which shows that it's not, it's not like, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's like, if you want to have a look at the, some of the work I've done, go and have a look, here's yeah. the link. Because also sometimes as well, you know, when you're trying to be a content creator, you put yourself into every opportunity you can yeah. and you end up making quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not a wrong thing or bad thing to say that some things you, you know, what don't think are as good as others yeah. and you'll make stuff and you'll go that was good but if people want to see it they can find it and if people ask I can show it mm. um, and I definitely think with rum reception there's one of those things where I was like this is nice it's good it's good practice it's good for me to have I like it I don't really think necessarily that I'm gonna just you know plug myself quite out early yeah. on in the creative capital yeah day, it, it was, was quite I think, really I think all of us research, yeah. I mean I, I've I floor managed that mm. and um, and I, I was really grateful for the experience and that sort of thing but as the show was going on I was thinking yeah, this is good, but we could definitely improve this. But that's the and, thing. And that's the building blocks and the learning but of but it. But then look at, if, if we'd only ever put, put out grief for Men Don't Cry, I'm sure there'd be a, a bit of us going, I want to do that, but better. And then we did. Yeah. I'm sure that with Run Reception, if we did it again and did it again, eventually it would become this slick, 
really good production. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is that thing, if you do a one-off, it is hard to nail it first time. 100%. Also, I feel like that first whole, the whole first like term, basically, of Credit Capital was almost like a, a test session. Mm. I mean, that was the first content as a group we made. And now, obviously, we're a collective. We all kind of know each other's roles, how we all work. But in that first kind of term, or those that first year of Credit Capital, a lot of it was like, okay, We've got to figure out how each other work, how we work together, what we're doing, and that was that was on location. That was outside the uni. We had yeah. managed to, you know, bag that location from mm. um, the can the design district canteen. Thank you again, you guys, for giving it to us. Yeah. Um, but that was actually quite a task because we were not prepared. We didn't have, you know, the liberty of having this, a studio, having everything basically there to set up. We had to just stop the comms. I think everyone was communicating on Discord. You know, on oh the phones, yeah, I remember like, that. Like yeah. it was, yeah. it was, it was, it, it, it was botched. Yeah. But. Um, it was brilliant considering that was our first, you know, on location kind of job. Um, but it's yeah. just, it was, there's been progression since then. And like, yeah, yeah it, is, it is a mix of the not having that whole narcissism of, you know, I'm the center of attention, everything's about me, but you definitely have to have that confidence in yourself. Cause if you don't, and I think someone, I heard, I read it or saw it or heard it the other day. Um, and it was like, how do you expect people to find you as a presenter? if you're not just putting yourself out there. Yeah. I think it was someone I was working on a job mm. and they, I mentioned it to them in passing and they were like, you, are oh, you making content? Are you putting yourself out there? That's exactly what ITV were looking for when they made you dance. They're like, this, yeah. is, this guy's probably hating doing this. Yeah. If, he's gonna, if he's willing to do that, he's he'll be to fine do, in front of a camera. Yeah, he's willing to do so, many yeah. things. I was actually gonna ask, I mean, we're talking about creative capital and you know, we're on the channel. We're all we're all almost basically sort of employees or, yeah. or or people that collaborate with them or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're all under that umbrella. So I actually am curious because I've been saying for weeks now, my what my favourite show on Creative Capital is. And I'm actually curious as to what yours two favourite shows are. My show personally, and I'll just come straight out of the bat and say it. The Rough Cut is, in my opinion, the best show on here. I absolutely love it. And when certain Creative Capital things come out, I share them about or I watch them. But I actually, every single time that comes out, stick it on, watch it straight and out. Now, we can't say Ben Don't Cry. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, <laughs> yeah, she was. I wasn't going to. Wasn't <laughs> um, going to. But, but, so I really like the Rough Cut. What's yours? Out and About. I, uh, out and is about that was our story answer? No, that, I, oh, think, I, just, oh yeah, go on. I just think it's... Out and About was fantastic. Yeah, I think until Goose on the Loose comes out, <laughs> it'll be. Yes. Well, Goose on the Loose will Goose be out on the loose. by, by this point. Right oh yeah, sorry. Go and watch so as Goose as of now. It hasn't, but yeah, it's it's Goose on the Loose. My favourite. Um, oh, yeah. But but bear, like, we're recording this. Let's, we, we don't give us. It's yeah. Magic TV Land or, or Show Land where you don't know when we're filming this, but we're filming this before. Well, we've just yeah. recorded it, and it'll be coming out. Oh, it's already come out when you're watching this. Yeah. But from the filming of it and our experiences of it, so it was fun. fantastic, it was, and it was, it was so fun. My, and I hope that that's come through in the yeah. video, and I'm sure yeah. it will. But out and about, I cam ropped one of the, one of the episodes, but just yeah. watching them, the energy, the way it's put together. Yeah, that is you. Like, like that is yeah. it, it, was, you, it was so you, fun. You make that like, show 100. percent You like doing it in Brick Lane is like where you are. Like you, you body Brick Lane to me. So yeah. like. You you bartering for head, like for sunglasses and it makes you pay more than you first agreed. Oh, mate. Well, like, by the way, what a twat! Yeah, right? <laughs> you <laughs> no, dancing well, to that lady like singing, like yeah. you getting a, a bagel and like you know testing. That was it was such a fun episode and I think Joel smashed it with like the yeah, promotion. Yeah, brilliant like, edit. Like, the editing was well. brilliant. Like mm -hmm. one little shout I would give. Not it is it is men don't cry, but it's not men don't cry. It is, but like the cupcake sale is one of my favourite videos. You know the well, BT, from the live stream. Yeah, I yeah. love that yeah. production. I want yeah. us to post it. Maybe yeah. it will be out by this point, but yeah. that that was a really fun one. Let us know if you guys want to see that because we will post yeah. it in the video. Out and about is my choice. Okay, go on. Is it is tough? Obviously, like um, don't have to say us, mate. Don't worry. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank fuck. <right? laughs> no, um, obviously, like I've been in certain shows and I've obviously have no bias to those ones yeah. um, but genuinely from like the content that comes out and being able to watch it and also like short form stuff as well because being able to have nice clips and good bits yeah. um, I do agree Rough Cut is like yeah. just brilliant like those guys really like are really passionate about it they care about they it they care yeah. about it and it's just this whole it does feel like very comfortable and conversational because it's mm -hmm. just them reacting going, I mean, come on, man, like this film's yeah. shit, this film's great. Mm -hmm. um, and being on uh, set with them, I had a lovely time. Like, oh, so that, honestly, like that's that for me was so fun. Yeah, I came on, I was excited to go on. I don't know how long the episode is, obviously, because it hasn't been released yet, but I just waffled and waffled and waffled because I was so excited to be on there. Mm. And I got to talk about a film that I really am passionate about in terms of I'm passionate about. 
it was after the film. I mean, it's come out by now. It was after, and I was so passionate about talking about it and trying to stick up for it and the debate. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I think Goose on the Loose when that comes out. I mean, I was yeah. gutted. That was I couldn't be there for the uh, shooting dates for that, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But um, just from hearing about it and the concept alone, and just the goose. Yeah. Um, that man is incredible. Yeah, and I the idea think, of Louis Tell is brilliant. I do think that will shake. Yeah the ground beneath it like yeah it'll be I brilliant. think it's so good it'll be really good um, it's a great video I you know what one of my favorite outside shouts one of my favorite actual shooting days was peckish pigeons I had such a fun day like it was actually like you turned up in a black top and everyone went, go get changed yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> my go to god yeah. I had to run to the outlet in the O2 yeah. get the so I mean for the, for the audience who don't understand the whole black top thing do you want to explain yeah so um, a lot of shows will be done with a psych which is like a massive curtain and you use they're normally black or white or they can be other colours but we just use black or white we used a black psych for that set I wearing all black yeah. or, no grey uh, grey trousers black top and with and our cameras and with the cameras you become a floating head yeah, you just easy. become uh, literally Black like <laughs> you can't see anything yeah. um, and so I was presenting and it looked like I was holding a mic and a floating head with <laughs> two, <laughs> hands, <laughs> two hands going hello guys yeah two mics yeah. 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 hello welcome but um yeah, you can't wear black on black. Uh, same with white, you can't wear white on white. Well, I didn't know this, but when I watched it, and I was just in a night top, I was like, interesting choice of sort of presenter no, gear. No, yeah, like. I didn't want, I didn't want to yeah, wear that. that very last <laughs> to be fair, it was bad for, but I do genuinely think, and I'm not trying to defend myself, but I'm pretty sure I asked, I said, what do you want me to wear? Yeah. They didn't give a preference. That was our first ever production, like big production. Yes, like, it was. But I was floor managing that, and I had such a fun day, like setting up the game, Doing like we had to like chuck bread at people. We had a we had a replay cameras. Yeah, that, we had thing. like PTZs either side. Yeah. Got, like so it was a fun. Big production. Yeah, it was really it was, good. First, it was, it was really first proper fun. production. Mm. So I will give that a little shout and say yeah, that, that's was, where it all that started. was a good one. The I thought she wasn't there for that day, but yeah. I think the the fun did whatever you think of the, the episode, the fun came across in it. Like yeah. you could see that people were having yeah. fun and enjoying themselves on yeah. it, which is good. Exactly. So that, um, was, that was a good one. Or, I mean, another, so moving on from presenting now and Creative Capital, another way that we know you is that I decided last year, um, during year two, to create and start a football team. You um, did? Yeah. We started a football yeah. team. Uh, it was called Rave AFC. We had kits, we had quarter zips, yeah. um, we had a full squad of players yeah. that, uh, that we trialled and I picked. Um, we, had we had a little... Vice captains, we had, I think. Mm, yeah. Bench warmers um, as well. Yeah, bench warmers, <laughs> yeah. And we, you know, we had all sorts. And do you know what? The, I think the... I uh, firstly want to talk about the reason, we st reason I wanted to start it. So basically we was a um, student accommodation and a lot of the lads in student accommodation um, wanted to, like, were, foot were into football. And we decided to start going down the park and start playing football together. And we actually managed to get quite a few and people. It, and it kept us going through lockdown. Like oh yeah, because obviously in our in our yeah. first year of uni, it we was still bubbled. sort of lockdown. It was twenty, it was twenty twenty, yeah. um, like September through to the following sort yeah. of. And that was our only little we relief. Like, we would go and play twice a week. We go and we go and play football, and it was literally like what we needed. Like, mm. I remember it. I, like, I. It was all we looked forward to in the week, yeah. um, setting it up. We'd play for a couple of hours in the freezing cold, like in, yeah. in the snow, rain, didn't, didn't matter. Yeah. Um, Just batter each other on a football yeah, pitch. Exactly. I remember brilliant. I once gave you, like, I made you, like, nearly, you were, you were in a state from the, one of the best slide tackles genuinely I've ever made in my entire <laughs> life. Yeah, you completely took me out. Yeah, and you started like gagging and like rolling around. Yeah, I can, I've, well, I got a concussion. Oh, I've yeah. still got a cut, I was, I was you know. nearly knocked out. I've and still got was a cut. And I remember, right, I, I was very vividly remember the experience. And I was going in and out, and I do remember like actually physically gagging, because it completely oh winded God. me, right? And <laughs> the Mate. whole time I was walking back uh. over, all I could hear in the background was everyone going, is he okay, is he okay? And then all I heard him saying was, yeah, I know it's bad, but that's the best tackle I've ever made. <laughs> that was unreal. Wasn't that a good tackle? And I just remember people going, um, yeah, no, it was a good tackle. And you just going, that was unreal. That I mean, yeah, I hope he's all right, but that tackle was unbelievable just the whole time. And I just remember thinking, you dickhead. It was a good tackle, but it absolutely wiped me out. Like, it was bad. That's what good tackles Don't do, though. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try and run past me. me. Talking about like, injury stuff, I've still got... Um, a actual like mark on my leg from when Colin two footed me with his studs up in a training <laughs> game. I've still like, got a mark on my toe from when you trod on me with your studs. Like a fucking VIP, mate. That was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. interception I've got uh, mental marks from the stress yeah. that the football team Hair took on yeah. me. <laughs> um, but before, before it was stressful, um, we started it really, and it was a bit of a mental health angle mm. as well. It was one of the first things where 
I decided to do something about, I mean, I think if we hadn't have done the team, we might not have started the podcast because that was the first step into me going, I'm going to do something about mental yeah, health. Yeah, especially sort of. because, yeah, and also because you, it was like, and also to do our friendship in a way, because you had been away for a while and we'd still been playing away. Mm. And then you came back and you were like getting yourself back in to the group. And this was like yeah. a really big thing for you to sort of integrate back with us. And then you yeah. were like, oh, we're, I'm going to manage, you guys are going to play. And we are like, yeah, that's great. We've been talking about it whilst you're away. And mm -hmm. then you came back and like, right, no, 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 let's actually do this. Yeah, like, and let's actually do it. And when I looked into it and realized that there were facilities where we could do this. And mm. like the idea of starting a football club, regardless of the level of the club, even if it was a Sunday league yeah. team, you're still creating a club. You're creating a badge, you're working with paperwork, you're doing finances, you're uh, providing equipment, you're working with sponsorship. Booking things and out everywhere. Not only are you doing all of them things at running the club, you're also managing the team, which yeah. is where you have to have a good relationship with the boys, you have to make good decisions and stick by them. I'm the same age, if not younger, than a lot of the lads on the team, but I have to speak from a place of authority. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that this is what I want, this is the formation I'm going for, and we're going for it. Mm -hmm. And then if we lose, I take that on my shoulders. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was, it was very uh, a big jump to take, but yeah. I would never have taken it back because yeah. although it was stressful and we lost every single game bar one, which didn't we win a game and we cheated. <laughs> Did we cheat? About that. Uh, well, well, anyway, yeah. that's for hey, hey, that's hey. an exclusive. <laughs> it's over now. It's all over now. It's over now. It's over now. Um, Too bloody late. But, but and the first time we actually met you was when we started doing a thing called um, casual kickabouts. And what that was is it was a group of, it was started off a group of lads, but we had girls come down. It was an all-inclusive, basically, thing where we'd book out a pitch, very simple. I mean, if you guys want to do it, it's very simple. You book out a pitch, nine-a-side pitch. You get, let's say, sort of, sort of roughly between 18 and sort of 26 people. We used to have people. loads of people. Yeah, a lot of yeah, people. Lot of people. We had like 12 aside on a nine-a-side pitch. But you just get people down. Everyone pays a certain amount. You split the money. That was another game people to pay, but anyway, yeah. I won't moan about it because it was it was good. But then that's the first time we met you, and yeah. I remember the first time I saw you play. I, because I, I was basically what I was doing as I was using it sneakily to scout people yeah. and to trial and to see who would actually be good yeah. in the team. And I'd already picked a few people that scored loads of goals and that sort of thing, and, and my mates as well from skate. But I hadn't yeah. met you before, mm. and um, I remember seeing you, and you played for the first for the first five minutes of the game. He was unbelievable. Like I remember, like you, every footwork. single per yeah. you, you, you won. Me about three times, you won. Yeah. You won every single one on one. You were megging people left, right, and centre. I thought this guy is like a ball playing centre back. Like he's unbelievable, right? Five minutes in, <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> I went, "You're right, mate." And he went, "He was like, oh. yeah." I mean, you grabbed yeah. me because I knew you slightly before. And you yeah, grabbed yeah. me and you went, "Mate, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done." So, and you was, oh, oh, man. Was I, look, I have a very much love hate relationship with. Football with the beautiful game. Yeah. I genuinely think when I'm in my bag, I'm in my bag, mate. Okay. Like, because I've never wanted that. I like naturally would always play centre back because yeah. I'm a big guy. I was always a fat kid. Yeah. Like, and to be fair, when we were playing, I was. You were, yeah, so, yeah. You were a bit bigger. Yeah, I was yeah, so yeah. unfit. Uh, Harry like has lost quite a lot of weight. Yeah, you have. But when I first met you, like I would say you were a big guy. Yeah, I, mean, I was. Now a big I'd say guy. you're quite slim, but you was a big guy, and that's why I noticed. Like I saw the skill there. I thought if he can just work on his fitness. <laughs> He's gonna be unbelievable. If only it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> if I, like, I was, because that's the thing. It was just like I would always love playing. I know because I always loved being further up than a defender. I always had the mentality of I'm gonna push up. And I'm gonna try and do, try and be a, a bit techie, you know, have a bit yeah. of skill. And um, I still think I, I had it. It was just I was so not oh, you're ready the for ultimate the five aside. That yeah. mate. So like it was just the conditioning for a big pitch, long, longevity, just like being able to progress. Yeah, mate. It was just. It was diabolical for me. Yeah. And even <coughs> when I did then, I think by the time I had like got in any sort form of better shape, I'd yeah. already gone, that's me done. Well, yeah. well, well you know, should we? I mean, so you made, so let's talk about it. So you, we, we started the team, we lost the first game 9-2, which was a sign of things to come. But I will say, no matter how many times we lost, we still, mo we most turned, turned up the next up, week. We turned up, even if we had eight people, nine people some games, we turned up and we gave it a go yeah. and we all tried to have fun and realistically we wanted to win but we was there to have a good time and just play football and I think it, you know, that's the mission of it mm. and that's the idea of it. I always, struck from a manager's point of view, I always struggle to know where to pay you. So, same. I'm even a manager and I don't know yeah, what to tell because, you. Because I, I think, again, as you say, we had a lot of uh, players in the team that hadn't played Sunday League before but had played five aside and they were techie, they were dribbling, the belief was great and, and they could run about the pitch for 90 minutes. And the, the, the thing we had is we was a team of like 19, 20, 21 year olds. 
playing against 40 year old men. Who so would just batter us about. The yeah. only thing we had yeah. was sort of skill and fitness, but we didn't mm. utilize them really no, because a lot of the lads, I, I, I'll try and implement a tactic and I could just see their faces like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm going, yeah, so what, you, what we want to do is we want to <laughs> play in triangles, right? So, so always create a triangle down the left hand side. I can see some of the lads just like that. Yeah, but uh, triangles yeah. are well and good until someone's battering you and you yeah. go, I just want to, mate, it's, go, right. it's 10 30. I was I managing like I was managing region. a Premier League yeah. team. Realistically, that tactics don't matter. Four, it's four, about two. getting the boys up for it. Mate. Hit it up the pitch. Yeah. It's, it's the same as like every team we played against. It wasn't like we were sitting there, they're pulling out a chalkboard and going, right, yeah. you need to cut into this space. It was, it was right, four, four, long ball, chuck yeah. it up, shove them off, stick and absolutely up. pump the ball into the back yeah, of the net. Yeah. Exactly. And that's all you needed to do. And they were, because they were, they were, like you said, they were 40 year olds, they were older than us. We couldn't that's play them at that play. game because we were smaller. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, but, like, th we always struggle with that. But the one game in which we want to talk about is the game where we actually played people our age. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and this, yeah. Was, mm. this was the game. So, it was set, the, set the scene. Yeah, sorry, right, fine. So it was, it was a home game? Yeah, it was a home game, the last game before Christmas. Yeah. About a year ago, almost to the day. Yeah. We are against this team who are all about our sort of age. Um, and we, we, I'm captaining the team, and we stick a, a pretty a half team, because some people have gone home. Yeah, it wasn't it even was, a full strength Yeah, team. exactly. And I was like, right, boys, we've got to get up for this. We can take them. We're probably bigger than these boys, right? Mm -hmm. This is the first time we've probably been the bigger team. Mm -hmm. We get there, first half, we go 1-0 up, yep. all right? I'm playing as a progressive eight, and if you could see me, I don't look like a progressive <laughs> eight. I look like a centre-back, <laughs> because I usually played centre-back. Yeah. Me and this guy called Baz, big up Baz, we're playing like four dates. We're doing really well. Someone scores a screamer, yeah. they get a stupid goal back, like yeah, the like most ridiculous. It literally goal. dinks over our keeper like, as he's come out mm -hmm. to get it. It's, he's missed it, and it's gone mm -hmm. in. And then awful. I think they scored again. Well, I think we went 2-1 down. No, we went 2-1 up. Oh, we went two one up. So we went 2-1 up. Same um, guy scored twice. Same guy, yeah. yeah Tyrese. Tyrese is very good. Yeah. Baller, ex, mate. Ex Absolute baller. baller. And then, and then, like within like two minutes to go in the, in the second, a ball just gets put put um, a, a, over the top or something, and it goes in again. Yeah. Another scrappy, yeah. easy, stupid yeah. goal. We should uh, basically we should be two 0 up, right? Mm -hmm. Half time comes two all. We we're very rearly drawing. Yeah. Charlie yeah, brings us all in. in. Bearing in mind, like usually at half time, we're about 5 0 down, and I'm yeah. going, right, lads, damage limitation. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this is the first game we thought we can win this. Yeah, so we're taking them, right? We're taking them for everything we got. In our opinion, we can go and win this game. Yeah. Charlie says to me, right, Louis, you sit a bit deeper, we're going to protect the back we line. Had, we had an injury. So the yeah. guy who scored two goals got injured, yeah. and he had to come off, and I was like, gutted. So we moved a couple people around, we moved Baz out a bit. Yeah. I came and sat a bit deeper, uh -huh. and then we went, right, Harry, you're going to come on. <laughs> Right, so super sub. I would also <laughs> like to continue to set some more context because we can't go into the next, the second half about laying the ground, <laughs> which is as simple as in the one game where we had a chance of winning, we chose to execute the tactic, which was let's chuck Harry at centre mid. <laughs> and, let's try it. And I stand by it. Had an injury. Every had every day, I would say it. Tra every training, I'd say to the town, I'd say, mate. You've got to try and put me somewhere else. Yeah. I think I got it in me. And even in training, right. he'd go, Harry, this is your chance to prove you can play Cam. There's your opportunity to do it. And I would try it. And I did just I did want to play somewhere else. Yeah. And this is also towards the end of the saga. He of was playing centre back. This yeah, this is towards the end of the saga of where does Harry play? Because we had tried <laughs> centre back, we had tried CDM, we had tried we hadn't tried centre mid. We'd not I, tried not playing. <laughs> yeah. No, we did. We, we did, did try that. Yeah. We tried that. I was on for the first half, mate. Borderline fullback, I could have yeah. been as well at some points. Um and it just wasn't working. Yeah. And I come on at centre mid. Should, oh, we, should we continue from there? Let's continue yeah. from there. So, so it's two all. Whistle blows. Two all. Whistle blows. And I'll bear right. in mind at half time I've been saying, boys, right, yeah. listen up. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. This game is the is, is the game. This is the day we win. This is our season changes mm -hmm. around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many people are going to want to play for us. And this and is the our thing big is, right, break. Yeah, and I we all understood that, but the referee didn't. Right, the referee was not on hit on board with that conversation because five minutes into the second half. Oh, no, 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 no. What? 30 seconds into the second Fine, half. yeah, yeah. Very, very... The ball basically gets into our own box yeah. and f somehow it's a handball. It genuinely didn't... Like, the, we, the referee said, I didn't see it, but he yeah. gave a pen, as if that's ever what you do, right? Yeah. Sunday league standards. They score, it's a penalty. We're now three on two. the free two and yeah. heads are a bit quake. It's getting a little yeah, bit... Yeah, 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 from, from the point of view of me now, I'm thinking, right, boys, we're only one goal down. We can yeah. get back into this. Yeah. We can do this, so, right? Whistle blows. whistle blows, we have the ball. Ball gets passed 
to myself. <laughs> yeah, so this is the f- past one by one. Yeah. Really. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Most of the pitch has run the other direction, which was a, yeah. somewhat of a tactic. <laughs> All of our other players have run. Who do I see just ahead of me? This. <laughs> this <laughs> brother right saying, here. Yes, Louis. Saying to feet, yeah, I'm to about to do to a rainbow flick for a boy. <laughs> so I'm a bone I go, Okay. I passed it. Bear, my pass was a little soft. I'll take par- partial responsibility. Mm. I probably could have hit a better ball to Harry. Yeah. Harry doesn't go towards the ball, right? He's still thinking the ball's rolling towards me. Brilliant. Man comes through the back of him, takes the ball. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like a, like but, a four so, on four. Yeah. yeah. It was um, like, my, it was before, it was even, I didn't even get my first touch, mate. I was yeah. thinking, okay, Harry, the game's about to start. No, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> it was gone. It's straight gone. out of the window. And then it went, and then they, they scored. scored instantly. Scored. Like, because yeah. the, all of the other players had gone, uh, fullbacks gone. It was literally me and two other centre backs and mm. Harry going, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so then we go 4 2 down. Then, about a minute after that, yeah. um, th- they, they get the ball back from us straight away again. Cross the ball into the box, and one of our defenders puts it. Scores the, the best own goal I've ever seen. Literally so dinks it, dinks it straight <laughs> over really our keeper. Really, right. really good. We've gone from two two at half time, lads. This is where it changes around, right? Two two to five two In the within about five. four minutes. Yeah. yeah, like so, like back to back. And that back just to sums back. up the team, right? Mm, yeah. And then you had your absolute moment at Magic, oh, where man. where I saw it and I and I knew as soon as that had happened that you were done. Yeah. Uh, like you were going to give up. Was this. There's a lot of moments where I thought I was going to give one, up. You know the one game. where the entire bench screamed in your face? Oh, yeah. yeah but this no. was like. This was towards the end of the game. I can explain this. I yeah. will happily take the L. Because you, your second half wasn't awful. It was dog shit, mate. No, no, no. Right. no, <laughs> no all right. Yeah, but after from, that little from, five minutes, you were fine. From a managerial yeah. point of view, there was players on the pitch that were also playing terribly. Yeah, no. Okay? But I think. W- so it, what happened is, obviously, I just hadn't found my rhythm. I was not. And uh, I will talk about post game. Yep. Post game, but I was uh, the ball. It was on on the sideline, and I was angry. I was <laughs> like, I was like, I'm just gonna put my foot in for the ball. I've got to try and make an impact on this guy. I was like, I'm just gonna try and shove him, God. and I look, I start moving towards him, and the guy does my move on me. He does a little dragon away, and I just went. You swung your leg, leg. so I literally hard. went. To, I went for his. I went for his ankle. I was going for yeah, his ankle, yeah, and yeah, I went, swung. and he went. You're not having that. Yeah. Got away. Whole bench. Yeah, you have to remember. Yeah, you've done it in like inches away from their entire team. And I, I had, I, I took the. I literally, I looked at their their bench and I went, "Fuck." (laughs) (laughs) uh, Fair enough. I've been absolutely mugged off here. Um, He's a bowler. He's he's really good. And then we Um, get to the post game, right? Uh, The game ends something like six two. We got we got. I think if if I remember correctly, you came off the pitch. I went. Yeah, go on. Take away. (laughs) And you went. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. And he yeah. retired yeah. there on the spot. spot. I went, I after went, getting spanned and the whole bench going, wow. I, I went to, I did, I went to Charlie, I went, yeah, mate, I think it's time to hang up the boots. I went, it's time to hang up the boots, mate. Tiring. I was trying. At the age of what? Age of 20. <laughs> I, I just, it, it, 19, it yeah. all got to me. I was like, in that moment, obviously we've been absolutely made to like schmucks yeah, and I went we I can't play back. centre mid I can't play centre back <laughs> I'm never going to play striker not in the spine I, 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 not in the out wide either oh, yeah. it's fine oh, it. bit off, mate. I went it's time for Huncho to <laughs> retire it's time to go I'm going back to <laughs> go back to streaming Put for four people on Twitch you know, like, <laughs> it's over yeah. and then of all people we're in the change room already getting bollocks by Charlie it was fair enough oh, and it was right them. and um, one of the other players' dads, who come, it was regular oh, at the games, big came up in. Bailey's dad, mate. And, what yeah. a legend! What and a legend. Bailey's dad came in. Charlie asked for his opinion on it, and he goes, first thing he says, Harry, I don't know where you were. <laughs> <laughs> violated you. Yeah. He went. He went, and it wasn't even like I was getting violated by the manager, by a teammate. It was someone's fucking dad, <laughs> mate. Yeah. It was. It was a spectator. Yeah. It was basically me getting like. It was equivalent of me getting like abuse for missing a penalty yeah. as an England player. <laughs> it, was, it was, mate. What the fuck Why? were you doing? <laughs> Why were you on the pitch, yeah. basically? And I was like, Fez. Yeah, fair. you got to just yeah. take on the chin. Yeah. And at that point, I was like. Not only am I quitting, yeah. but like I expect my my number to be hung up as a, like a legend. Retire the number. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's just done. Not for yeah. not for skill, but for being <laughs> fucking r- for the game. Yeah. Yeah. The game. So that was that was the football team, everyone. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, I was like that. so what I want to go on to right to 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 um to cap off this wonderful episode. You've been a great guest, Harry. Oh, is um I basically want to I've done a little bit of research, guys, and I, and I, I've come up with a bit of a concept, right? 
And I sort of want to talk about, I mean, you're an opinionated guy, I'm an opinionated mm. guy. Love Simon. You're, you're, you're all right. And then um, basically what I want to do is I want to read out a couple of like controversial opinions yeah. or little things or that sort of thing. Cool. And I think what it does, it will make the audience get to know us better, but also get to what me, do we you do a little better. Discuss. No, so what, so what I do is I think I'll read out mm. some of them and I'll let you guys read out some of them as well. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. we cool with that? Um, so, I mean, I've picked these out from Reddit, so I know what these are, these guys don't, even mm. the ones that they're gonna read. I'll start, I'll kick us off, okay? Go for it. Um, so these are all just Reddit things I've found, you know, Sorry about that. Um, these are all just Reddit things I've found, um, so you guys can have a look and find your own and do this with your mates. Uh, it's interesting. So some of these are a little bit more serious, oh, and some of these are joking. Charlie, come oh, on, shut come up. On. Get into it. Let's get into it. It's off, right? Let's go. Um, so anyway, first one is this. Okay, and let me look. Let me know what you think. Right. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. Leave me alone. Right. Oh, well, okay. Um, so this is the first one. There should be an Olympics that allow steroids. Okay, now hear me out. Now hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Okay, so this is what they said. Because, fuck it, let's see how strong humans can really get. Give them all the steroids that we can get our hands on and watch them lift cars. How do we feel? Because, right, let's be honest, right? Doping is always going to happen yeah. in sports. At least it, let everyone Why go. not let them go up against each other? Okay, yes, but counterpoint, can we add one randomly selected bloke to compete alongside them. A control, so can, a yeah. control, yeah. Yeah. A control. Like, This is what keeps like Dave from the chippy. Yeah. He just, he's had to go down to the 100 meter sprint. <laughs> 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 you can just see these roided blokes go, wow, and he's, just, he's gone. And oh, then you can, have the roid, you can have roid records. Yeah. You know, you can have, they can have their own roid records. Right, from a realistic point of view, are we not maybe forgetting that this could be like taking lab rats and giving them just like te new drugs to yeah, try? If they're doing it anyway, but the point is, is that not dangerous to their health? And you're just saying, yeah, keep going, mate. Just jab them in. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's a laugh. It's funny, yeah. though. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. It's hilarious. Do it and get Dave on side as well. <laughs> right, well, next um, one. Well, I think we should have you read out this one. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a top one here. This, this one? one? Ooh, yeah, long one. one. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I know you won't let me do this. Okay. Same you it. don't need to get married. Okay, interesting. You don't need to find the one soulmate, blah, blah. This is all drilled into our heads through movies, books, by people, etc. I realised this after a failed marriage, wasting time and years trying to build and save the marriage. Every now and then, the thought of finding a soulmate comes to my mind, and then I think, why? Why do I need someone permanent in my love, you made it? In my life, I earn well and... <laughs> oh, fuck! fuck. I can, I'm carrying on. I can earn well, <laughs> I earn well me, and man. can take care of myself better than any man can. In fact, oh, okay. Wait, that's an omen this for what's about to, yeah. the shit storm you're about to get when you get home to the mission. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fucked, mate. Um, better than any man can. In fact, all the men I've come across have limitations and want to be babied after a point. <laughs> Since I don't want kids, I really don't need a permanent partner. Before we say anything else, can we please clip this so we miss out the bit where this is an opinion and, and it's, it's just Louis, Louis saying what he thinks. And <laughs> and he's he's Louis girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am actually going to start off by saying I completely agree. Because, mm. like... I, and I actually completely agree might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I do think that this whole concept of, you know, love is you've got to be settled down with a family and do this, that is genuinely not what is going to make everyone happy. And I do s sort of say this being from a home where I've seen that it's not, it's not what makes everyone yeah, happy. Yeah. But um, I don't necessarily think it's the way for everyone. I think for the majority of people that's fair, but there are people who genuinely won't enjoy being settled down, won't want to have kids. Um, and even being in hot boy summer myself, <laughs> I can say that I haven't always gone out there and going, yeah, I wanna be straight into a relationship. And what is, the, I don't see the problem with that continuing on to when you're older and that has mm -hmm. to stop at your youth. I you think know, it's all personal, be, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I got to a point where I was like, no, I would really quite like a girlfriend now. Yeah. But for a while I was like, I'm, ho I'm but okay. But, yeah. but I'm I guess okay. this is, cause, uh, like, yeah, having a girlfriend's great, like, everyone knows the benefits mm. of it. I guess this is more like, uh, uh, it moves on to a different point maybe not what they intended, but it's almost talking about how it's an expectation that that's how your life progresses, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you, know, you have your career and then you find someone, you settle down, that's that settle down word, you get married and you have kids and you live that life. Whereas for a lot of people, that's just not what they want. That's not what they're into. Mm -hmm. Like for me, when I picture my future, I don't necessarily picture my happiest moments coming from, I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have kids. Like, that's not how I see my life. And for them, people that don't see their life that way, they're almost looked at in a, a sort of, Carry on. They almost get looked at in this sort of like strange way. 
this sort of like weird way where they're like looked at as slightly different than other yeah. people. Yeah, and I'd also like to say for the record that I'm very happy, Maisie. <laughs> 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 I don't I don't want to stay together forever. Yeah. No, I mean, I personally... <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, personally, I do. I'm, I don't think that way. I'm the opposite. I think I'm very happy being with someone. I don't think I work on my own, mm -hmm. personally. Um, yeah. I mean, you've seen firsthand some of the ways I used to get like... I'm quite private, but I, I mean, sometimes, yeah, I'm very happy being in a part, and I'm, I've always had family at the center of my life. Like, even when I was like, like young, I, was, mm -hmm. I wanna be a dad, I wanna have a family, that's all I've ever wanted. Yeah. So for me, not personally, but I completely understand what mm -hmm. you mean. Like, it's not for everyone. I've, I, I know loads of people who like, it's just like, I don't have any idea of that being my life. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it not work. I think a lot of time when, you, when you've seen it not work, yeah. You can be like, like and it's interesting that we we'll see that way. And your your, your parents are so they divorced, yeah, divorced yeah. so they divorced. Obviously, my dad passed away. <laughs> 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 my dad passed away. <laughs> I've never had someone give me On an a public L. podcast. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Your parents are separate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> sucks, damn it. Take the, take the L, man. Okay, um, man. But yeah, so both of our parents, that like obviously, you know, whatever happened happened. Yeah. Whereas your parents are still together right yeah. now. So it's like sort of differing sort of opinions yeah. based on that sort of stuff. Oh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm sorry, but you don't get two Christmases. Like. True. Yeah, <laughs> That's one true. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I get half a Christmas, so <laughs> there you go. Um, anyway, <laughs> take the L. That's another L. <laughs> Seems like a win on my part, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest. I've not lost yet. Right, there's your one, Harry. Right. Read this out for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you can eat chicken, beef, kangaroo meat, <laughs> I love that. That's an Aussie. Yeah. Rabbit, Etc. <laughs> then et you can't be a hypocrite when it comes to eating dog meat. <laughs> That's bollocks. You can't turn on your, uh, you know, ethical animal lover tag, and all lives are equal. Dogs are in no way superior to other animals. Let them eat cake, basically. Am I seeing a rabbit playing fetch? No. <laughs> Mate, you could chuck anything is, at a rabbit. Is thing, exactly, yeah. not getting it. It's the domestication yeah, exactly. part of it. If you, if we've decided over hundreds of years that we want dogs to be our companions, yeah. in the same way that we have dogs and cats are our companion pets, yeah. then I mean that's not universally adopted though. So in countries where they might eat more dog meat, and this is not a stereotype, but apparently in China they mm -hmm. eat mm -hmm. well, there's more so commonly so practiced. So there's, so there's a, the Yulin Festival, which does practice. Um, boiling dogs and that right. sort yeah. of stuff. Right? So they might not necessarily not necessarily have adopted as well as you know mm -hmm. we have over here that d dogs are household pets. Yeah, and I could be completely wrong with that. This is a bit of a guess, but I do feel like there are some countries where that might not necessarily be a thing. And you know what? I think personally, that is up to them. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. So, but Western culture, yeah, that's what we've done. But in an alternate mm. universe, could we not have like domesticated, like I don't know, a kangaroo for instance? And then we wouldn't want to eat that in that yeah, culture because we'd be like, "Well, no, we could. I have it at home." Yeah, that, that's what. It, that, do you know what I mean? So I think that's where you draw the line. If it's domesticated, I think you then build a personal human relationship. Yeah, with it's it. the relationship yeah. that makes it yeah. human. And we also do we do humanize absolutely dogs and cats, and we give them expressions that maybe they don't even have. We go, "Oh, look at him! Look, look at him smiling. Yeah. He's not smiling. He's not. He's not expressing happiness for a smile. A His mouth looks like it's yeah. smiling, and you think he's happy because." You've done something for him. Actually, yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's like, when you see, it's like when you see a dog sticking their tongue out. You yeah. think, "Oh, he's having a great time." No, the fuck is thirsty, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is actually a sign of anxiety in dogs. Yeah. So, like, they're not actually happy. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's. I think that's yeah. fine. Oh yeah. Um, and then, so the last one I want to talk about, a little bit more of a serious one, is um, uh, is this one. Okay, so this is what someone's posted. Um, if you're a male, no one actually cares about how you feel, only about how well you can perform. Um, so, so what I mean by ability to perform is their ability to be a productive member of society, like working and making, making money, etc. The only time that people will pretend to care if, is if these feelings are somehow, or somehow getting in the way of how well they are performing. If you're a highly successful man, you could be suicidal, self-harming or overall suffering. But no one cares about that unless it's interfering with your performance. Now, me personally, I see elements of truth in it. Yeah. So obviously we can only talk from like bloke's point of views. So from, from my point of view, I see elements of truth in this and I feel mm. this as well. And I see it as well because I feel as though, although progress has been made, as men we are still, we do either feel or be given that responsibility of performing well and having to perform well and having to work hard to get where we are. So if 
your mental health and that sort of thing is affecting that, that's when people care. And all these sort of schemes that come in place about mental health in the workplace, usually the reason people will get mental health help in the workplace is because their work is not as good and mm. it's affecting their performance. Therefore, their boss will go, OK, mate, your performance hasn't been great. What's going on? Rather than seeing them upset or noticing their behaviours and then asking them. So I, I do completely understand that. Mm. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I think a lot of the time, I completely agree. It's like it always feels like it's, how's work? Oh, it's good. And how are you? You're right. Yeah. It always comes second. It's always, like, it's always yeah, about it's strange, isn't it? how you're getting on as a person and like with your... What yeah. are you providing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what are you getting what you want from life mm. before is like, are you happy with life? Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot of the time. It doesn't always feel like that, though. No. no. Uh, but what, what I will say is that, like, this guy obviously is saying, like, no one cares. And what I will say is, people yeah, do that's care. Not true. Yeah. Like, people do care. And, but I completely understand that point of view. Especially if he's writing from that place. Yeah. yeah. You can feel like no one cares about you. Yeah. And, you can, and you, can, you can feel it through the words and the way he's yeah. phrased it. No one cares. Like, I could be this, I could be that. No one cares unless it's affecting my performance. But if you, you'll be surprised if you reach out to someone how much they were able to relate and be able to help you by relating to you. And be like, do you know what, mate? Even if it's someone going, do you know what, mate? I feel that too. Because mm. we're all saying, like, I mean, me and Harry specifically have both said, we feel that. Oh, you know, and, yeah, and, so and absolutely. And you, so and you felt yeah, it yeah, as yeah. well. So we've all felt it. Mm. So actually, you'd be surprised that if you open up to someone you know, even a work colleague or even just a friend or anyone or a parent or brother or whatever, people have gone through that as well and can completely relate to that. So I would say that... You, I, I, I agree with what you're saying to a certain extent, but it, it, people do care, and that's yeah, where I yeah. disagree slightly. Yeah, no, you know? 100%. I think, obviously, it's becoming a lot more recently that it's not so much work-related, and mm. obviously men's mental health recently has had a massive push forwards, and it mm. is kind of getting... not. It's not there, but it's slowly creeping up on the point. The awareness people, is there. Yeah, the, the, the stats in men's yeah. suicide and that sort of thing is still bad, and yeah. it's still getting worse. Yeah. But it has to get worse before it gets better in terms of the awareness comes in, mm. and then years and years action. after the awareness comes in, action takes place, yeah. maybe even a generation after. I mean, even like for myself, I think it was um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a friend who's at uni um, up in Nottingham, and he texted me going, oh, I, was I was meant to check in on you a while ago. How are you doing, mate? Mm. And it was even just... For me, I mean, I, I was doing fine, I was happy, and I was just like, mate, just the fact that you're willing, that you've now like, remembered in your head, the next time I text you is not to go, how you doing, uh, how's uni, it's, yeah. are you okay? Yeah. And then it's, okay, all right, we can talk now. And as blokes, else. we do do that, yeah. don't we? We go down the pub, we go, as you, mate, as the missus, as, you know, whatever. You go through the same spiel. You go through the like, spiel, and then maybe at the end you might, and then, through. you know, when you're talking about working, you go, oh, I'm a bit stressed. They go, oh, are you stressed, mate? Rather than being, how's you? Yeah. yeah. And then how that affects work. It's yeah. always sort of work first or uni first or how's the family or whatever. Yeah, everyone gets so caught up in what they're doing that you go, oh, shit, yeah. I actually probably should ask them, but you, you just go, oh, but I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And yeah. Yeah, no one checks in on each other, but yeah, yeah the more we can do that, the better. 100%. Yeah. Well, that's everything for that segment. Mm. Um, and that's something that, you know, that caps off the episode. Yeah. I think it's been great having you oh, on, I'm, mate. I'm mean, having a brilliant time. Yeah, I'm, really I, and, I, and I'm buzzing that you were the first guest and yeah. that you'll always be the first proper guest yeah, that we've get, had. Thank you so much for having me. We'll stick you on no, the wall. So no yeah, worries. Hopefully yeah we get, we're gonna, we, hopefully we're going to start a little wall of, um, yeah. of photos of some of our guests, which oh, will be really nice. Yeah, sensational. Um, yeah. But yeah, but that's everything. Thank that sums up the episode. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Louis, for being the... Uh, best co-host I could ask for um, and thank you guys for watching if you like the episode if you like Harry go check him out um, socials will be down below um, go check out Harry, Harry has, has no, no friends, friends. yes uh, again not a statement it's a show <laughs> <laughs> so go check that out that's out now and come and yeah. visit us again on the yeah, next man, episode we've got lots more coming out we just had uh, all our episodes still got more to come yeah. um, so yeah come check us out on all our social medias uh, yeah, really appreciate you watching again, and yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Cool. See you, on see the you later, side. guys. Bye. 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 Bye.